January 6th was not a coup. I'm Carl Higby. Everybody knows I'm not Greg. He's off tonight. The House Select Committee hearing on January 6th was just partisan garbage. We watched these four officers go before a panel of left and wing politicians and obviously two rhinos who want to convince the world that the worst, it was the worst attack since the Civil War on America. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War to what was already the worst attack on democracy since the Civil War. This was the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. In this attack, worst attack on our capital since the Civil War. It was one of the worst events that's ever happened to our democracy. It was the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. It's Stop. It's like they go to Target for their talking points. The, the violence against police officers and the destruction of property on January 6th was unacceptable, period. Those people have been brought to justice. But let's be clear, this was not an attempted coup. Full stop. It was an attempted coup that was happening at the Capitol that day. There is a difference between breaking the law and rejecting the rule of law. Between a crime, even grave crimes, and a coup. This was a coup as far as I'm concerned, attempted coup. We all saw an attempted coup. We saw it with our own eyes. We heard it with our own ears. There it is right in front of your face, if you don't believe me. It is a coup attempt. It is an insurrection attempt, and it is based on lies. Do you see that first officer? The guy was literally reading it off, and he read coup. The P is silent, but I digress. The fake news and the officers who testified on Tuesday, they'll literally do anything they can to exploit this January 6th. The reality is a bunch of knuckleheads and idiots who call themselves, one, one of them even calls himself the MAGA shaman. He was wearing a bullwinkle hat and face paint, okay? Broke into a woefully unprotected capital and took a bunch of selfies. By the way, we know for a fact that additional security was declined by Nancy Pelosi. You know, more on that in a minute. But let's remember only one person was mortally wounded in the chaos. One unarmed woman named Ashley Babbitt. Yes, she entered the building illegally. Yes. She was part of a crowd and that was trying to advance further into the Capitol building, but she didn't deserve to be shot and killed without so much as a warning. In fact, once the situation was brought under control, the Congress reconvened in the same place, just a few hours later, to take the vote. Okay? It couldn't have been that bad. You know who didn't get reconvened? Hundreds of business owners that lost their livelihoods when Black Lives Matter demonstrators last summer tried to uh, turn a looting and, and basically a free-for-all riot with major parts of cities burning to the ground. And what was the response from each? I mean, this wouldn't be Greg Kelly reports if we didn't come with the receipts, right? Right after hundreds of businesses burns, then future Vice President Kamala Harris asked Americans to donate to a fund to help bail out the violent rioters who got arrested. Could you imagine if Mike Pence tweeted out a link to help bail out the Capitol rioters or even help with their legal expenses? <sighs> Pandemonium. You see the hypocrisy here? Look, a few hundred idiots broke into the Capitol. This was the FBI response. An APB on everyone that was within 100 yards of the Capitol that day. Mind you, nobody lit a single fire. There was no substantial damage, and only one bullet was fired, the one that killed Ashley Babbitt. Now, I'm not saying that the FBI should just look the other way, not at all. But they should, shouldn't they be investigating every riot? Brand new Rasmussen poll out today shows 66% of American voters, nearly two thirds, two thirds of the population of America, want Congress to investigate the riots from the summer of 2020. That's 66%, folks. There are approximately 275 riots last summer, like over a billion dollars in damages. Just one incident on January 6th where what, somebody stole a podium. At this point, we seem to be divided into two camps. There's these breathless hysterics like the Don Lemons and, you know, the other folks on CNN, and a few non-Republicans, okay, that's what we'll call them. They, they, they simply want to use this as an opportunity to perpetuate this outrage against anyone who still supports Donald Trump, which is a huge number of people still. And they want, they want to keep it alive through 2022 midterms because, let's be honest, they can't run on any of their policies. They're all a dumpster fire and they're falling apart. On, one, on the other hand, though, we have what I like to call normal folks, like you and I. You know, we focus on issues like, is my four-year-old going to have to wear a face diaper this year when I send them back to school? Well, apparently not if you live in Florida. Superstar Ron DeSantis put a stop to that today. 
Very soon, I'll be signing an executive order, uh, which directs the Florida Department of Education and Department of Health uh, to issue uh, emergency rules protecting the rights of parents uh, to make this decision about wearing masks for their, ki for their children. Uh, we think that that's the most fair way to do it. Oh, I love that guy. You heard that. Parents making their own decision for their children. What a novel idea that is. It's this one thing we used to call freedom. That's right. Yes. All right. So people like you and I were sitting there wondering what the hell is social infrastructure and why are we about to spend three trillion dollars on it? Things like community housing. I told my wife I was going to be talking about this day and she just rolled her eyes and says, like, please stop talking to me about this. She's a very highly educated person who went to Yale. She's a moderate Republican. She's certainly not a fan of Trump. She's Republican, but she's not a fan of Trump. She still thinks that the mainstream media hysteria is the real thing that's terrifying here. Maybe that's why Mr. Potato Head and that thing he calls a show over on CNN has lost 70% of its viewership. <laughs> the memes just write themselves. I'm sorry. Do not be confused, though. The January 6th commission is in no way designed to get any answers to what actually happened on January 6th. It's about avoiding the narrative of all the dumb stuff the Democrats are doing and about to do. This is about the fake news keeping this in the minds of Americans long enough to tie it to the Republicans for the House and Senate midterms next year. Fact. I mean, did you hear what tra uh, traitor Liz Cheney said on Tuesday? Listen. Officer Gunnell, when you... Um Think about that and, and share with us the vivid memory of, of the cruelty and the violence of the assault that day. Um, and then you hear uh, former President Trump say, quote, it was a loving crowd. There was a lot of love in the crowd. How does that make you feel? I got to say, uh, look, folks, anybody who's watched Greg's show, look, Greg, we thank him for his service. I was also a Navy SEAL for nine years. I have dodged RPGs, bullets have been blown up, shot in crashes, and you name it, okay? And these people want to make this out. I'm not diminishing the impact on democracy that, that, that this could have had, but the fact of the matter is, is I just don't think it's as bad as they want everybody to believe it is. It's what I find most reprehensible about this is the use of some of the law enforcement officer as political pawns. And by the way, six months ago, not a single House Democrat gave a damn about other police officers. It was, you know, after months, actually years of defund the police, you know, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. It took that long until they thought, hey, maybe this would benefit our party. So Jen Psaki trouts out there trying to turn it around on Republicans. Listen. He said, Republicans defunded the police by not supporting the American Rescue Plan. But how is it that that is an argument uh, to be made when the president never mentioned needing money for police to stop a crime wave when he was selling the American Rescue Plan? Well, the president did mention that the American Rescue Plan, the state and local funding, something that was supported by the president, a lot of Democrats who supported and voted for the bill, could help ensure uh, local cops were kept on the beat in communities across the country. As you know, didn't receive a single Republican vote. That funding has been used to keep cops on the beat. I mean, how dumb do they think we are? Seriously. You think anyone other than the group think Brooklyn coffee shop dwellers believe any of this garbage? Your party spent two years assuming that basically every cop was guilty until proven innocent while you tried to defund them. Literally, it happened, and you're now refunding them because you found out it doesn't work. And now what, some poll came out and said you were stupid and you think people are going to forget about it? Bad chance, lady. Okay, anyway, the, the moral void, this didn't stop the liberals from dragging some of these, and I say this with all seriousness, carefully chosen cops up to the stand to tout their talking points. Watch. I use an analogy to describe what I want is a hitman. If a hitman is hired and he kills somebody, the hitman goes to jail. But not only does the hitman go to jail, but the person who hired them does. There was an attack carried out on January 6th and a hitman sent them. I want you to get to the bottom of that. Ooh, so this guy Harry Dunn called Trump a hitman. So you should go to jail. Okay, for what? You show me what Trump did that is worthy of prosecution. You're a law enforcement officer. What's the charge? Because this is the speech that I watched. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. 
So, Officer Dunn, if you were making an arrest, what would it be for? No, seriously. Would it be based on facts of any kind? Of course not, dude. A simple look at his, some of his older social media posts shows exactly what his motivation is. Check out when he said, congratulations to crybaby Adam Kinzinger when he announced his wife was pregnant. Now, here is him cozying up to Nancy Pelosi. He also posted about Jacob Blake being shot and killed by a police officer while he resisted arrest. And here he is with this, his daughter at a Black Lives Matter rally dressed in full BLM gear. How about Officer Aguilo Gunnell? I'm still recovering from those hugs and kisses that day that he claimed that so many rioters, terrorists, were assaulting us that day. If that was hugs and kisses, then we should all go to his house and do the same thing to him. Okay, so let's break this down. This is a Capitol Police officer. You know, obviously he's there testifying that there was violence that day, okay? So that aside, this officer is advocating for that same violence against a former president of the United States. I mean, this is why Republicans didn't want anything to do with this hearing. They knew exactly what the narrative was gonna be. As we saw with Nancy Pelosi's move to eliminate Jim Jordan, he surely wouldn't have, he, I mean, look, he would have been the voice of reason on this thing, but he wasn't even allowed to participate. There are two narratives here. The first is that this was a planned insurrection. The groups got together ahead of time and planned it in detail. But the problem with that is that insurrection is a criminal offense. It, it, it is a, it, an actual statute that you can be charged with. You can be charged with insurrection. But to date, not one person, not one, has been charged with insurrection. Not one, okay? The second narrative, which we also see trouted out simultaneously, but they are mutually exclusive, is a, a paradigm that this was inspired by Donald Trump himself. For weeks after this, January 6th, the left couldn't figure out which story it was. They wanted to go with this and that's one. They, like I said, folks, they're mutually exclusive. They can't both be true at the same time. Some even said that it was both Similar to the BLM riots, though, last summer, groups of proud Americans got together to protest a perceived injustice against them. Okay, freedom of speech, right to assemble, peaceably. There were some good people in the crowd, there were some bad people in the crowd, and eventually, it all got out of hand. But everyone accused of looting and rioting last summer got due process. Many got bailed out by Kamala Harris. Many got leniency. Now, while people like Jacob Chansley are still behind bars awaiting trial on trumped-up charges, even though he broke nothing, hurt no one, and was let into the Senate chamber by a Capitol Police officer, it's a two-tiered justice system, folks. The Capitol Police Department failed, and there were crazy people, but it was not a coup. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.